Next, we have ears. Otoscope, twist on, twist off. So you twist it righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Um, some of the other otoscopes that we have in the rest of the room have um, a little focusing wheel. So you can use that to focus, and those have a higher magnification. Now, these otoscope specula, there's two different sizes. Make sure you have the big one. That's for adults. If you have the small one, it's for children. You're not going to see anything through it because there's not enough light gets through. Now, when we do, when we do um, an ear assessment, we've already done auditory uh, acuity last, last class. We had them plug up an ear and ask, ask them to say a word. We said a word, and they repeated the word to us. So we're going to skip straight to the actual ear assessment. First thing is inspect the ear. Next is check for tenderness. Does that hurt? No. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look inside. So you pull up and back, and then you put the otoscope inside. Aim a little bit forward, and you should be able to see their tympanic membrane. There's two things you're assessing as you go into the ear. The first one is um, the tympanic membrane itself, and then the other one is the external auditory canal, or the EAC. So tympanic membrane, which is the actual um, eardrum, and then the external auditory canal, which is what you see in order to get there. Now, if you're doing it correctly, the patient shouldn't experience any pain, maybe a little bit of discomfort, but it shouldn't hurt them. <laughs> so the key when you do this, um, turn your head that way a little bit, and you Which way? scoot in. This way? Yes. All right, so as you do it, you put the, you put the um, otoscope and toward the front of the ear and press forward as you slide in, then rotate and look. And if you're in the right spot, you should see it without having to go too deep into their ear. Um, if it's hurting the patient, or if you're not seeing anything, then you're doing it wrong, ask the professor for help. All right, what we're going to do next, we're going to do the other ear also. And you can also hold this one of two ways. You can hold it like this, like a hammer, or you can turn it up and hold it like this. If you hold it like this, what you usually do is, is use your pinky and other fingers to stabilize it against their head. I've done, I do both ways, I've done both ways, I really don't have a preference, but I think most of the time I tend to do this. This is also useful sometimes if it's whacking their head, you can get it kind of up out of the way. And check the other ear. Now, we're going to leave this on because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look up their nose. So look up at the ceiling and you know, Open their nose and look inside. You can also look through it if you want to get a little bit, um, a little bit magnified view of their nose. Then take this, take the speculum off and put this down for a moment because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to palpate their sinuses. So we have four sinuses and only really two of them are easily palpated, and a third one is can be palpated is a little difficult. So we're going to palpate maxillary and we're also going to palpate frontal sinuses. You can also do this one right here, the sphenoid, but it's a little more difficult to get. Um, what you're doing is asking, for tender, asking them if they feel any tenderness and that's a sign of inflammation of the sinuses. You can also percuss them um, and if a patient has sinusitis they may punch you, so be careful. <laughs> Alright, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do um, the mouth and throat. So this is where we break out our tongue depressor. Excuse me. Alright, now the tongue depressor can be used for several different things like birdhouses, but we're going to use it for two things. We're going to use it to help inspect their teeth and lips and gums. We're also going to use it to help inspect the back of the throat. So um, what you want to do is you want to start to the side. Don't open your mouth. So don't, don't open your mouth very big. If they open their mouth too wide, what it does is it puts too much mm -hmm. tension on their lips. And what we want to be able to do is use the, use the um, tongue depressor to be able to pull their cheek outwards. So that's the first thing. We can inspect their gums, lips, and teeth using this. Next thing we're going to do is ask the patient to open their mouth and stick out their tongue. 
and say, oh, uh, you may recognize that as testing uh, cranial nerves 9 and 10. And the other thing is, if you can see into the back of their throat, then you really don't need to use the tongue depressor at all. But if you can't, what you can do is you can place this on the, on the bottom third, ask them to say, ah, again. Uh, and if that doesn't work, you can actually try and do a little bit farther and gag them. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, don't try and gag them. But they will gag if you're not careful. All right, now come in close and from the front. We're going to try and look down and see the tonsils. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, so say ah. Uh. Now, do you see right back there? There's a tonsil. It's that little round thing. It's got a little white dot on it. That's very common, not necessarily a sign of anything bad. And there's another one on the other side. So you'll notice that there is a little arch behind and an arch in front of the tonsils. Those are called the tonsillar pillars. Um, some patients always have large tonsils, and some people really don't have visible tonsils at all or ever. So it just depends on the patient. You want to ask them, is that normal for them? Um, when you look in the tonsils, what's going to be abnormal is if there's lots of pus or if it's inflamed. Just being large by itself is not a sign of a problem. Um, any questions? No. Okay. Hello. And what you do here is you put it in the ear canal like this, and you should lift it up, <laughs> put it in. Then we'll look up their nose like this. <laughs> Anyway, Look into my eye. Just see my eye.